Hi, you are watching. During the time that Mordred was spotted training his swordsmanship, his thoughts were focused on how he may succeed in winning the heart of the princess during the next three months. After a significant amount of time spent practicing, he made the decision to take a little break. Charlotte walked over to him and presented him with a handkerchief, which caused him to be taken aback. Following that, he requested that she move out of the way, but Charlotte did not agree with him. She asked him why he must refuse to listen to what she had to say, and he responded by saying that he did not want to cause any confusion and that her father, Dyke Magnus, must have informed her that he and the princess are going to marry each other. But Charlotte would not give up, as she stated that she had learned that the princess is requesting that the marriage be postponed, and that according to the king, the princess has never had a particular preference of who she weds, but she was a demonkey opposed to marrying him right away. Charlotte insisted that she would not give up on the situation. She continued to attack Mordred with those strategic remarks, which caused him to feel sad. After that, she asked her if what she meant was that he had absolutely no attraction as a potential groom. She then added that if the princess expressed her desire to postpone the marriage in front of everyone, then that would be an indirect way of rejecting him. Charlotte then stated that this was not an accurate representation of what she had intended to say. After that, she made an effort to persuade him to reconsider her father's proposal of marrying her, but Mordred refused to do so. This was due to the fact that Duke Magnus had instructed him to betray the king and choose his side, and he also threatened to destroy the temple, which serves as the final refuge for children who have lost both their parents and their homes. As a result, Mordred made it quite apparent that he has no intention of taking it, and he eventually parted ways with her. Later on, however, he was observed by himself pondering the information that Charlotte had shared with him earlier. Perhaps it was true that nobody wants the marriage to take place. Subsequently, he came across a maidservant who exhibited peculiar behavior and did not wish to have her face exposed. She did this by covering her face with the bouquets as she walked away shortly after the encounter. However, Mordred had already started to believe that another person would have the courage to present a bouquet of flowers to the princess while he was still within the palace. As a result of the fact that it was always the ladies who approached him, he started to have doubts about himself and his attractiveness. He came to the conclusion that perhaps he wasn't assertive enough, and as a result, he decided that it was his time to assert himself. He recalled what he had read in the guidebook on courtship, which stated that writing a love letter is one of the strategies to win someone's heart that is not only the most evident but extremely effective. In the meantime, the mysterious maidservant who had appeared earlier turned out to be the child from the temple. He had entered the princess's room and noticed the book in which the princess had written her things. He made the decision that now was the appropriate time to determine whether or not the princess was in fact who she claimed to be about her identity. At the same time, he was attempting to discover the true identity of the princess. At the same moment, the fictitious princess was making her way back from the temple, where she had been attempting to acquire knowledge that would make her life back in the palace simpler. She longed for the manner of life she had in the demon castle, and she wished that she had a minion like Stoas here in the royal palace as well. She missed her existence there. When she got closer to her room, she saw that the door to her room was slightly ajar. As she came closer, she discovered the boy dressed as a royal maidservant looking over her bucket list. She appeared out of nowhere behind his back, horrifying him with the dismal aura that she carried as well. She was able to do this by suddenly appearing behind him, because he could see in the book that she wrote about things she wanted to accomplish while pretending to be Princess Freya. The child instantly retreated out of fear and asked who she was. He was under the impression that she was one of the henchmen of Duke Magnus. The demon was extremely irritated by the fact that she was referred to as a henchman, despite the fact that she is unaware of the identity of Duke Magnus. As a result of her wrath, she broke the bubbles and announced herself as Lilith, the Demon Queen, the overlord of the Demon Realm, and the master of everything that is bad. However, the child did not believe her and she demonstrated her point to him by using her abilities. She made the book look as heavy as a horse-drawn carriage, and she anticipated that the boy would drop it. However, the boy was able to keep his grip on it, which demonstrated how strong he is. The next thing he did was question her why she had deceived Mordred into bringing her into the human realm. She responded by saying that it had always been her ambition to live her life as a human princess. After that, he inquired about all of the disgusting things that she intended to do with Mordred, but she did not provide a simple response to his question. 
but the Demon Queen, who believed that the youngster was a maidservant, noticed that there was a similarity between the boy and Mordred. As a result, she made the decision to transform the boy into her human servadine, just like Stoas did when he was trying to entice him with all of the wealth and powers that he could gain if he signed a contract with him. The youngster, however, declined her offer, stating that the individuals who assisted him when he required assistance the most were not demons like her but rather Mordred and Clarent from the temple. As a result, he would never betray them, and he would never do anything to hurt Clarent anymore. Upon observing that the boy had a stronger preference for Clarent, she made the decision to utilize this weakness in order to persuade her that she is capable of easily corrupting such men in a short period of time if he does not become her subordinate. In response, the boy threw the book to the ground and then picked up the table in a furious manner, stating that he would immediately get rid of her. While Duke Magnus and his daughter Charlotte were enjoying their meal in the dining room, he inquired about her conversation with Mordred. In response, she stated that Mordred does not appear to be at all confident about the princess's feelings towards him. She also stated that if they are able to use Princess Freya to their advantage, then she is certain that she would be able to convince him to change his mind, mostly due to the fact that if Freya were to reject him, he would be forced to search for an alternate solution which Charlotte had already planned out in order to convince him that she is the only person who can fix his problem. After that, Duke Magnus complimented his daughter and advised her to keep an eye on the princess that she was also responsible for. During the time that Lilith and her newly discovered subordinate were in her room, she was surrounded by a large number of invitation letters. She was under the impression that someone had found her charming. However, she was informed that this was not the primary reason, but rather the fact that the real princess had never attended a single social event, which is why there are a lot of people who want to meet her. Aina, on the other hand, recalled what had occurred the other time when he wanted to throw the table at Lilith, but she had just smashed the table with her bare hands. At that moment he saw that he would not be able to overcome her with only raw force and that he would have to play along until he could find another option. Getting back to the present, Lilith looked over the invitation card, but she was unable to find one that piqued her attention. She had been hoping to find one that was pretty like the ones that she typically read in her novels. As a result of this, Ayla began to question what kinds of literature Lilith had been reading and Stolas was able to determine that someone out there is aware of exactly how he thinks about the behavior of the Demon Queen. A particular invitation card, on the other hand, attracted her eye because it had a genuine gemstone embellishment and also possessed the unusual and gloomy atmosphere that is characteristic of her native area. Ayla then went on to explain that Charlotte was the one who extended the invitation. In response, he went on to talk about the king's younger brother, Duke Magnus, which means that Magnus and the king have completely different personalities, yet they are both descendants of the same bloodline. Consequently, Charlotte is one of the most powerful people in the world, and she is notorious for her expensive lifestyle, not to mention her great arrogance. In addition, she is so fascinated with Mordred that she has already sent 100 proposals to him. Following this realization, Lilith came to the conclusion that Charlotte must have asked her as a challenge against her romantic rival, and she made the decision to accept the invitation. On the other hand, Lilith discovered another letter, which was a love letter written by Mordred. Mordred had spent the entire night attempting to write love letters, but he was finally able to send one to the palace this morning. However, when he checked through the ones that he had with him, he realized that he had sent one of his drafts to the princess instead of the one that he had imitated from a well-known poet. As a result, the princess is currently in possession of one of his drafts, which can be considered a failure. Mordred went to meet his friend Current and explained that he had sent one of his drafts through the mail instead of the primary, accurate one that he had prepared. Although he was concerned that the princess may dislike him, Clarence assured him that it was possible that they would not be able to determine whether or not the princess would enjoy it. Therefore, he inquired about what Mordred had written in the letter, in which Mordred requested that he make a solemn vow not to laugh when he reads it out loud. Furthermore, when he read out the letter, it was so hilarious that Clarence could not believe it and inquired as to whether or not Mordred was attempting to make a joke out of it. Mordred was in anguish, since it would have been less painful if Clarence had simply insulted him directly rather than asking him such things. As a result, Mordred immediately went out to the palace in the hopes that he could obtain the letter before it was delivered to the princess. In the meantime, Charlotte was observed with a group of other young ladies of the nobility while they were enjoying a cup of tea. 
During their conversation, they expressed how honored they were to be invited to attend the first tea party hosted by Princess Freya. They also speculated about the appearance of the princess. She spent three days and nights preparing the truth serum that makes the consumer reveal their deepest, darkest thoughts, and just one drop of the serum in the princess tea will let her know precisely how the princess thinks about Mordred. Charlotte was in complete preparedness regarding the fact that she spent all of her time creating the truth serum. When the fake princess, Lilith, entered the room, Charlotte was so taken aback by how stunning she was that she became distracted for a brief minute. However, she quickly regained her composure and continued on with her business. As Lilith began to engage in conversation with the other females, they inquired about her experience in the demon realm, where she had previously participated in the game alongside them. Following that, they inquired about her perception of Mordred, to which she responded by praising him and stating that he is brimming with vitality. However, around this time, other people were already thinking of something else. Nevertheless, in order to obtain the truth, Charlotte requested that Lilith drink some tea before it became cold. When Lilith did so, she discovered that Charlotte had spiked the tea, which caused her to feel something boiling inside of her and the lips to tingle. In the meantime, Mordred was standing at the entrance, debating whether or not he should enter. Eventually, he made the decision to enter. She responded that her homeland has the most beautiful mountains, cleanest water, and clearest skies in the world, which means that she is the Demon Queen. As he opened the door, he observed how Lilith responded to the question that the ladies asked about how she survived. She said that her homeland has all of these things. In the aftermath of Lilith's revelation that she is the Demon Queen, she came to the realization that the tea contained Truth Serum, which she then used to divulge her secret. Simultaneously, Mordred entered the room, and she promptly took advantage of the circumstance by dropping the teacup and acting as if she was ready to pass out, which she ultimately did. She eventually passed out. Everyone was astonished and questioned what could possibly be wrong with Lilith. Even Ayla immediately suspected Charlotte of doing something, claiming that she must have placed something in Princess T because she is the only person to whom something happened. With the exception of disclosing one's deepest minds, Charlotte was taken aback by the unexpected turn of events as there should not have been any adverse consequences associated with the tea. Mordred instantly picked up the princess and urged Ayla to stop accusing anyone. He then confronted Charlotte and told her that he would return to her once he had determined that the princess was in good health. After that, he left with the princess in his arms. Meanwhile, Lilith who was pretending as though she fainted was delighted by how things turned out to which she believed that with the way things are progressing, she would be able to cross one third of her bucket list by the end of the day. She ultimately woke up after waiting for some time, which caused everyone to be concerned about her health. She then stated that she enjoyed the tea, stating that it had tremendous relaxing effects and that she was alleviated from her exhaustion as a result of drinking it. Due to the fact that she was able to sleep in Mordred's arms, she made the decision to disregard it. Lilith went so far as to express her gratitude to Charlotte for the tea, stating that she had been having problems sleeping. Mordred then apologized to Charlotte for forming incorrect assumptions about her aunt Charlotte who was so ecstatic that Mordred apologized to her was overjoyed by the fact that Mordred had apologized to her. Anna then apologized as well and asked why Lilith was unable to sleep. Lilith responded that it was because of the love letter she received from Mordred, to which the ladies immediately asked her to recite it, and she was about to do so. However, she put on a serious expression and said that she would forgive him this one time. Anna then apologized as well. However, Mordred does not want to lose his composure, so he attempts to walk nearer Lilith in an effort to retrieve the letter. However, he stumbled on the tea that had spilled and landed straight on Lilith, which caused him to blush violently in response to the look that she gave him. The fake Princess Freya was already trembling as she could not withstand Aina, trying to kiss her again, just as Mordred did for her back in the Demon Castle. That made her act funny and embarrassing in front of the subjects, which started to cause tumors among the subjects that the princess is not normal anymore. The subjects already knew that the rumors spread far and wide, then people would actually think that she is mad. Meanwhile, the physician already told them that it was due to part of her memory, which she lost, causing all those scenarios she was making. Before they knew it, one of the king's subjects already came up with a solution of finding her a tutor who will have to return her so she can restore what she has lost, whereas they did not know that she did not lose anything, but just that she was not the king's daughter. 
When fake Freya heard about the fact that she would be required, she found it annoying that she would have to learn etiquette just to be sure she was standing in for someone. She did not actually see the reason behind all that, but Ayla, on the other hand, has later find her true identity as the Demon Queen, so he made her understand that presently with the whole situation, she has no choice but to rather admit to what the king planned, because learning etiquette will prevent her from being noticed as the Demon Queen, because she was actually obvious Mordred, which is why she have to do something about it, before others found out as well. As Ayla and the Demon Queen were still talking, Nathan, the etiquette instructor, came in, introducing himself and getting to know Ayla and the Queen as well. So, thereafter, he asked Ayla to excuse him and the fake Freya to discuss, but Ayla was reluctant about that. Meanwhile, as he was sneaking to check on what they were doing, before leaving, he saw the way Nathan was just seducing Freya and knew that Nathan was not an instructor but a total womanizer, and it was so shameless that the Demon Queen, known as Freya, could be so denser that she was already falling for him. All what happened that instant made him remember Mordred, who loved the princess so much that he already told Ayla before to always update him on whatever the princess is passing through. So with what he saw, he knew that he would have to inform Mordred right away and let him know what was happening. Freya was not even thinking of Ayla or matching, but was already attached to Nathan and relaxing herself with him, as they discussed how she wanted to greatly improve her etiquette. Whereas Ayla was angry and regretting Freya and Nathan's moment together, he believed that it was not supposed to be. Shockingly, it was Nathan's father, part of the king's subjects that actually sent his son to be a spy and informant for him. Who want to know the main reason why Freya has decided to postpone her marriage? Because Nathan's father knew that something was wrong somehow. So, he hoped his son could get invalid information, which was why Nathan was trying to get Freya's attention and he could see that he was already close with her when they first met. Nathan was already looking for a way to lure Freya into his plan, trying to make her believe as if he only has feelings for her, and not that he has bad intentions towards her. So by that, Nathan was already stepping into the realm of the romancing world, trying to seduce Freya so she could fall in love with him and seize the opportunity to get the information he wanted from her. When the emotions were getting out of hand, that was when Ayla could not bear watching them anymore and bumped into them, he went in angrily. Nathan was shocked about this because he actually thought that he had left but Ayla made him understand that he was standing nearby, so he did not trust him right from the first time he came into the room. Ayla then went straight to make Nathan understand one fact that he cannot even marry Freya as he made him understand that Mordred is Freya's lover because they are already engaged Therefore, there is a limit to what Nathan can do to her. However, Nathan did not believe that because he actually thought something was wrong for Freya to have postponed the marriage, so he did not want to believe what Ada was telling him. Freya, on the other hand, was absolutely shocked that Ayla could come and rescue her, although it seemed as if she was falling for Nathan, but then she was scared about the way Nathan was behaving and now she is happy that Ayla could come in at that time. Meanwhile, as Nathan was still trying to prove Ayla wrong about what was wrong somehow, that could have made Freya postpone the marriage. Moreover, Freya herself could see good and real points in what Nathan was saying, because when she thought about it, she remembered that the real Freya actually preferred to stay with Stola, the demon, than to marry Mordred, who risked his life for her, so that means if the princess was brought back on reality, she wouldn't have married Mordred. Nathan insisted that Mordred is not the perfect match for Freya, and now, he was already behaving like a devil in another person's relationship, because Ayla already made it clear to him that Freya is engaged to Mordred, but he did not agree to that. Instead, Nathan stood courage on his own point, that he is the perfect match for Freya, because Mordred cannot guarantee safety for Freya. Nathan believed that Knight did not always live a secured life and so, he can't be putting Freya's life in danger, rather, Freya should marry him. At a certain point, Freya got angry and stood up all of a sudden to threaten Nathan a butt as she held him tight in his neck, to the extent that Ayla had to caution her immediately because it would be dangerous for her to kill a soul, and so she held back immediately. She then warned Nathan to be cautious of what she said as she also claimed that she loved Mordred. The way Freya behaved at that moment made Nathan wonder what could have happened, because that was the first time he would fail seducing a woman. And also, he noticed a strange kind pea power in Freya which was monstrous in nature, but hopefully he did not turn about that much. 
Nathan was actually afraid of Freya at that moment because she could have killed him from what he had been saying, so he had to apologize. Yet, he is not giving up on her, seems like he wants to be like a prodigal son, he still has the intentio to win Freya's heart. Therefore, he planned that he would take a rapprochement in another way, but first he has to gain Freya's trust while he is still her instructor. 